All right, so this is chapter 14 of The Gathering of Soldiers, part one. Here's a disclaimer. Zoom in. Stay for three seconds. And then back to this picture. Chapter 14, Managing the Island. Wake up, fools. Let's get going right away. Thomas said out loud to wake up his group members. Seth squirmed around on his bed. Where's breakfast? That's why I'm telling you to wake up. I talked to Chara yesterday and she says she'll have breakfast ready for us. Thomas approached Seth's bed to shout, At the same place! Come on, let's go! He then tapped on Seth's back numerous times. Thomas kept walking around in the room pestering at the sleepy soldiers. He then went out to wake up other soldiers in different rooms who will be going to eat breakfast with them. Now, give me your attention, Thomas shouted while facing 11 soldiers who were facing him. It was very obvious that Thomas was just trying to add humor to a lazy morning by copying Lord Pericles' posture and voice. Some of the members started chuckling and Apasio smiled. Thomas cleared his throat. It's not funny. Stop laughing. However, this time, Thomas couldn't hold himself since others were laughing even more, so he started to laugh too and soon the area in front of the support platform's barrack became a laughing stock. Soon, Seth poked Apasio aside to say something. He loves doing that whenever Lord Pericles isn't around. Suddenly, a door opened, and a tired soldier came out, shaking his head. Hey, what's going on? He yawned. It seemed like he just woke up and was standing right by his group's door, holding onto its side. Thomas turned to look at the soldier. Good morning, Claus. So you guys are joining us for breakfast? Captain Claus suddenly became alert. Oh, yeah, of course. My guys are waking up by now because thanks to someone who barged into our room this morning. Hmm, who was that guy? Thomas played along with a smirk. Captain Claus yawned again. Anyways, just tell me where you guys are going to eat. You know that shop where Dina and Chara own? There, Thomas said. Okay, just give us a short while. We'll be out soon. Captain Claus went back into the room. Upon seeing him going away, Thomas chuckled a bit and continued his speech. A small change of plans for this morning. Captain Claus and his men will be joining us for breakfast. All of us then will go to the southern road to do our tasks. Understood? Yes, Captain! Everyone shouted back. Now, let's get moving. Make sure to take some carts and tools and get them ready next to our rooms. We'll be cutting trees along the planned road because Commander Cairo said that the executives won't wanted to connect the potential stone quarry and later have the road follow the eastern coastline to connect to the eastern road, which leads to a fishing village. Thomas dusted off his hands and started moving. They were the first ones to walk out for breakfast. Based on the campfire's full of ashes, it appeared to be that other soldiers had a heck of a time last night. Some of them had fallen asleep on the ground and it seemed like they had been terribly drunk. When Apasius looked back at the base, he couldn't have been seen he couldn't have seen anything more chaotic before his life here. However, he just shrugged it off hoping that Commander Kairos would tell them to clean up and waited along just like what other members were doing. Oh, finally they show up. Thomas looked looked on as Captain Claus rushed out with his men. Captain Claus approached Thomas and was panting very much. You know, Thomas, he paused to breathe. Why do you wake up so early all the time? Thomas stretched his arms. Because it feels great. And plus, you get more daytime to do your work. Don't you like that? I don't like it that much. Captain Claus sighed. In fact, I don't like pushing myself too much. I'm going with you because of that breakfast, since I would do much for food. After that, Apasios couldn't hear them anymore because they started walking. It seemed like Thomas and Captain Claus were arguing along the way to the harbor, but he didn't sense any kind of negative atmosphere, so he assumed that they showed their friendship by arguing with each other. What happened afterwards is so mundane that we decided to skip that part and go right into when they arrived at the southern road to do their tasks. And here it goes. Thomas looked at his group members. Hey, how many carts do we have? 
floor, Officer Kai said. Hmm, let me see them. Thomas took a short look at the cards. When he was done looking, he thought for a while. Thomas pointed at a card. That fourth one is our lunch cart, huh? Yes, Thomas, says Ted. Okay, then that cart doesn't count, so we have three carts. Thomas paused for a while. You know the drill. Two people man each cart, and that leaves six people to work on cutting trees. Raise your hand if you want to cut the trees first. Of course, Thomas raised his hand, and he was followed by Magnus, Gilroy, Gibson, and Vincent. Thomas looked at them for a long time before speaking. No, two of you drop your hands. We'll switch tasks when our group gets too tired to cut anymore. So the groups sh should be balanced in strength, that is, not too many weak guys in either group. Soon, Gilroy and Gibson dropped their hands. Thomas started walking among his group members to see what, who to choose. Okay now, Kai, Edwin, and Andel, come over here. Then, you guys who aren't cu cutting trees, help us out by hauling branches and clearing the bushes first until we have enough firewood stacked up on the place, then we'll put them in the carts and push them all the way to resource building and stack them nicely in there. You continue that process until I say switch, understood? Yes, Captain, the soldiers shouted. After that, the soldiers followed the road, and when they reached the end, Thomas began directing his group regarding which trees to cut down. We need to make a road which is very spacious so that five wagons can travel together side by side when the road is finished. Therefore, there will be lots of trees to cut down. Understood, Thomas said while pointing towards a group of trees in front. His group members agreed, and others followed with hauling branches. When it came time for them to fill up the carts and carry the wood to the resource building, Ephraim began assigning partners. Okay, Seth and Apostles, you two group up. Gilroy and Gibson, you two, and I'll go with Lucio. After that, Ephraim left first with Lucio, followed by Seth and Apostles, and then Gilroy and Gibson. Hey, Seth. Do you guys come here often? Pasio said after a while of going in silence. Not really. It was months ago when we worked on the road. Got halfway done until suddenly Lord Pericles told us to stop cutting. I guess now we really are going to finish it. Seth breathed in fresh air. Sometime later, they went into the fortress and re reached the resource building in the nor northwestern part. Pasio stared at the building with his mouth open. Wow, this resource building is big. Yeah, there's meaning to it when we call it resource building, Seth said. Hey, Ephraim, seems you guys are almost done putting wood in, Pasio said as they neared Ephraim and Lucio during the work. Yeah, but we should start speeding things up, though. Thomas is really fast in filling trees, Ephraim said. We're leaving now. See you guys later, Lucio said as they passed by with the empty wagon. Seth and Apasios bade them farewell and continued stacking the wood inside the building. Stack them up nicely so that the next batch will have more space, Seth said. Okay, no worries. You know, why do we have to push this car all the way around just to store the wood? Apasios said. Soldiers acquired the firewood from the front door. This is the back door. We do that so they use up the old wood first before going for the new ones. Seth pointed inside. You see how we still have a lot of room to stack up a lot of fire, firewood? We push the old wood ahead before putting in the new ones. And if you stack them about halfway up, then that should be fine to move on to another stack. Oh, I see. Then the branches go over the here, so that the soldiers can easily take what's needed, Apasio said. That's right. Just stash them along on the other side, then they'll be taken in time, said Seth. Said. By then, Gilroy and Gibson pushed their cart towards them. Therefore, Seth and Apostles greeted them. Well, well, aren't you guys late in line? Seth said. Gibson cleared his throat. It's because Gilroy wanted to see how the chickens were doing. Seth, cleared, Seth looked to the east, where the chickens' enclosure was. You know, those chickens are interrupting us more with their work these days. You went all the way over there to see them? Yeah, we did. I know that we get distracted a lot, but I'm just always joyful because they provide so much food for us. Seeing them grow makes my heart pound with joy, Gilroy said. We really need to stop eating them for once. Their numbers continue to stay stagnant because we eat them just as soon as they get the chance to grow. 
Seth growled in anger. And so many of them die off before even growing big enough. It takes like what? Three months for them to get big enough for us to eat? Double that time for the female ones to start laying eggs? It's so absurd that we continue to eat them fast. If we just wait, then, no, then we'll have to eat. We'll get to have so much more meat later on. Gilroy chuckled. All right, Seth. We'll control our eating habits from now on. I promise that I t tell this to others. Thank you. That helps a lot. I would like to see too many chickens in there so that we'll have to enlarge this enclosure. Says Seth. After that, Seth and Apostles left the place with their empty cart. Seth had a bad feeling and said that they should check upon the chickens to see if anyone was violating the rules. When they neared the chicken enclosure, they saw one of Captain Claw's soldiers chasing around some chickens. Seth pointed at the enclosure closer to them. That's the chicken enclosure. W what is he doing in there? Hold on here for a while, Apasios. He went towards the chicken's fence. What are you doing, dude? He looked at the soldier. The soldier flinched and looked at Seth. I'm trying to catch this chicken and eat it. Oh, don't you dare touch it. Look, it's one of the hens that lay eggs. Don't eat anything. Wait, never mind. Seth pointed at a limping chicken farther away. Go eat that dying chicken way over there instead. It looks like it got kicked by a hawk. All right, fine, soldier said. With frustrated face, Seth came back from scolding the soldier. Pasius wondered what had happened, so Seth explained it for him. Ever since the executives agreed to Thomas' request in building a livestock enclosure, he was also given the privilege to oversee it and have control over it. Right now, it's jointly owned by Thomas and Captain Claus and their groups, which is us, since we contributed much in buying the animals and building everything here. Our two engineers designed the various gates and fences. However, we are obligated to hand over some animals to the headquarters during special and reasonable occasions, so that they slaughter them and have other soldiers eat them as well for feasts. Wow, Thomas is very creative. But do these animals really help in increasing the food supply of this fortress? Pasius pointed at chickens. Seth gazed at the chickens. At least for the chickens, we have seen much increase, but we have yet to accumulate enough numbers. Many of them die prematurely, like I told you. The horses are for riding and they help and they help the blacksmiths. The, the cattle are used mostly for their milk. We haven't been able to eat any of them yet since we are waiting for them to grow bigger. We started all this two years ago. Oh, wait, that hog enclosure has the most production. It was never our idea because the hogs smell the worst and are nasty. But the melee guys love their meat. So they brought in the hogs and have since raised them. Seth turned around to go back to work. Pasios followed and said, Wow, it makes me take a look again at Thomas. It seems so unlike him who often gets drunk. Seth laughed. Well, I'm quite sure that Ephraim has much influence in the ideas. Pasios nodded. Oh, that makes sense. Was there some progress in numbers though? Yeah, we've got some calves, baby goats, and four times as many chickens by now. Also, there are lots of piglets and some medium hogs that are ready for slaughter. Melee guys are just waiting to slaughter some for their feast. Seth suddenly clenched his hands. For that soldier who was trying to eat that healthy chicken which lays eggs, that's a definite no-no. Such an imbecile he is. Hmm. Don't, don't hogs smell the worst though? I wouldn't want to take care of them. We never raised many hogs back on my dad's farm, Pasio said. Set aside. Yeah, I told you, raising hogs was none of our ideas. It was more because the melee soldiers wanted them badly. They agree that they'll take care of them if we just build the enclosure. They love pork very much. That's why we can't do anything about that, you know. The chicken's enclosure is quite tall. Why is that? Pasius looked back at the chicken's fence. Yeah, we have to build a tall and a combination of fences and fishing nets must be used to keep the chickens, even the smallest of them, from leaving the enclosure. It costs a great deal for us to have the resources ready for this, Seth said. Has anyone left the enclosure before? Apasius said. Yeah, from time to time, Seth chuckled. Some soldiers would accidentally leave it open. Then the chickens come out one by one, and we will have to put them back in. 
One time, we saw a group of them roaming past us during our training routine. Lord Pericles got so angry that he almost made us take it down and get rid of the chickens. After that, there have been no other issues. Seth and Apostles talked more regarding the enclosures and what to do about them. By the time that they came back to the end of the southern road, Apostles got to know more about the enclosures and what he can do to contribute to them. He found out that they normally eat male chickens since... They would get eggs from the female chickens every day. When other soldiers, besides Thomas and Captain Claus' men, would like to eat some, they will have to pay, and that money would be more than enough to cover the chickens' food costs. If there would still be surplus, then they would sell them at the market at the island's town. The profits will later be evenly distributed amongst the group members. They continued that process for as long as Thomas grew endured in felling the trees. When Thomas said that they couldn't do it anymore, they all stopped working to have lunch. It was smoked fish, bread, water, and grapes. Some time later, Captain Claus' group joined them for lunch. Everyone was tired, so they didn't talk much throughout the meal, so nothing worth mentioning happened. After the meal, the soldiers rested or took care of their necessities, and they gathered back to the initial area to do their tasks. Today, we'll cut as much as we can. So far now, Captain Claus, you and your men will help six of my men in cutting down the trees into firewood, Thomas said. Then, everyone started doing their work. And this time, Thomas and five other soldiers, who previously worked very hard, were able to take some rest by pushing the carts around. Now, a total of 14 people worked on cutting trees, while six pushed carts. Therefore, by the day's end, the resource building was filled up, and road became longer. With that, the soldiers ate food, washed up, and got into their beds to sleep. Good morning, Apostius. How come you're up so early? Officer Kai said. Apostius was digging around the ash with a long stick as he was sitting by a fire pit. He was a bit startled and looked back. Good morning, Officer Kai. I couldn't sleep well because yesterday's labor was quite strenuous on me. All my body aches. Yeah, I understand. You must have had it tough. Officer Kai sat down next to him. Apostius looked at Officer Kai. What made you wake up? Officer Kai le leaned back. I had to go to the lavatory, and I saw you on my way back, so I decided to check. But dude, the lavatory is super clean. The archers cleaned it yesterday. Wow, seriously? I'll make sure to go there after breakfast. Want some water? Apostius picked up a water skin. Yeah, sure. Officer Kai took the water skin, but who's he? He then pointed at a sleeping soldier. Apostius glanced at the soldier. Oh, I don't know him. I just came by because his drooling face looked funny. Officer Kai gasped and covered his mouth in shock. Oh my, I know that guy. But let's just see when he wakes up. Apostius looked at the soldier again. Well, if you want, I've been here next to his head for quite a while, but he didn't even budge. Officer Kai shook his head. Shame on him, then, letting a lower-ranking soldier sit by his head like that. Pasius flinched. Gosh, I never knew. I'll move now. He then started moving away. No, Apasius, you don't need to move. He's fine. You guys look very funny like that. Just stay there. Officer Kai said, and he laughed a bit. Pasius moved back to his place. Oh, uh, okay, then. Random question. Is Magnus good friends with Lucio? Why do you ask? Officer Kai said. Because Magnus was very into talking with Lucio on Sunday. It seemed like they've known each other for a long while. Hmm. They didn't know each other for a long time. But in a sense, he's something more. He's like a big brother to Lucio. Officer Kai grimaced. Apasius looked at the Officer Kai. Something wrong? Oh, no. I was just thinking of something. Officer Kai zoned out for a bit. Is Magnus a big, scary brother to Lucio? Apostius picked up the stick and resumed digging at the stash. Officer Kai sighed. Maybe so, and I would say that Magnus ruined Lucio's fighting style. Apostius picked up a patch of ash. How did he ruin it? Lucio is now very afraid of fighting anyone who's better than him. He would run no matter what kind of chance he could potentially have. Officer Kai yawned. Sorry, I don't understand what you're talking about. Apasios stopped digging. Officer Kai looked at Apasios. 
You know that people's fighting skills could fluctuate depending on how they feel, how alert they are, how tired, and the rest. And it's that you get better if you train yourself against those that are better than you. Uh-huh. So what did Magnus do? Apostius looked at Officer Kai. Officer Kai frowned. Well, Magnus turned his affection towards Lucio into more like a smothering kind of affection. All encompassing and binding that he did everything he could do to keep Lucio safe and make Lucio fight in a way that he stays safe from any harm. He chuckled. He lost his officer title after that raid because he overdid it and made his groupmates to follow his lead in not fighting much. On the other hand, Lucio always wants to avoid him, but he couldn't do that dinner since Magna has had it with him at all times. He looked down at the fire pit. Wow, I never knew Magnus was like that. Pasius let go of the stick and lied down to look at the sky. They remained silent for a while. Officer Kai looked at Apasios. I've seen you getting around with Lucio a lot these days. I don't recommend you to spend more much time with him. Because he's not really a reasonable type of person. Easier said, he's unpredictable. Officer Kai, Pasius started fiddling with his hands. It's actually Lucio who follows me around. I could care less if he doesn't do that. Officer Kai flinched back. Huh? That's weird. He normal. He doesn't normally follow others by his choosing. Are you fine with that though? He hit you that one time. Yeah, it's okay. Pasius felt his cheek where Lucio punched. Other than this, he's good. Well, I guess you're strange just like him. Officer Kai laughed uncomfortably. Then they remained still for a while in silence. Pasius wanted to say something, but he felt that Officer Kai would say first, so he stayed quiet. Soon after, Officer Kai tapped on Pasius' shoulder. You know though, it's interesting that you don't complain about the working and living conditions here. Pasius laughed. Why would I complain about here? I love this place. Officer Kai shrugged. I don't know. There could be many things. I complained when I first came here and had to chop some wood or clean the laboratory. I stalled, acted like a brat, and slacked off as much as possible. But I have yet to see you saying or doing anything bad. I guess I'm over that point now. Pasius cleared his throat. I used to be a leader in complaining and other guys would follow my lead and adults got mad and scolded me for those occasions. However, those got boring and I started to see no point in doing them, since I started to believe that doing work is actually beneficial for me. Also, I used to do much of the housework because both of my parents worked and seriously, all of you guys provide me with food and shelter, so obeying you guys' orders is the least that I can do. Pasio sneezed a couple times. Suddenly, a soldier next to Apasius woke up and grunted. Then he began looking around his surroundings, so Apasius asked if he needed something. Water! I need water! The soldier said. Apasius la laughed a bit. Here you go, I guess this was your water then. The soldier immediately took the water skin and drank while lying down. Ah, that hits the spot! The soldier turned his head to face Apasius. Hey kid, how long was I down for? Oh, I don't know. I came over here a long time ago when you were asleep back then, Pasio said. Is it time for us to get up already? Soldier said. Pasius looked around. Yeah, pretty much. The, su the sun's just coming up right now. Just wondering, were you guys drinking wine last night? The soldier chuckled. Yeah, but others did it two nights straight. We looted the barrels of wine from the Turkish town last time. And we just emptied one of them last night. Does it feel good when you get drunk? Apasio said. Yeah, definitely. Soldier looked at Apasios again. Say, kid, what's your name? You're that new guy, huh? I'm Apasios, Apasios said. I'm Officer Anatolios. He then noticed Officer Kai. Oh, hey, Kai, just noticed you were there. Officer Kai laughed and returned the greetings. Come on, Anatolios, this was the... That was the archer's night. We crossbowmen need to stick with each other. Oh, come on. It was just for one night. And they invited us, the second group of Claw's squad. Officer Anatolius raised his arms in triumph. What could we have said about that? 
Look, other guys are scattered around as well. He then pointed at other soldiers who were collapsed down on the ground all over the area. The posse looked at them in shock. Apparently the numbers grew this time. What did they talk about last night? Officer Anatolius coughed. Oh, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. When men drink, they show their innermost secrets, and that night was hectic. They were talking about moving groups and all that. So, other than Com Commander Kairos, Captain George and Niles, pretty much everyone will be moving groups. Heck, some of them want to join us to avoid each other. They're on the brink of falling apart. There seems to have a lot of grievances piled up too. What? They always seem so good with each other. So, we always thought that they were the group with the highest quality soldiers of utmost character, Officer Kai said. That's what I thought too, but that night was different. I thought I was seeing totally different guys. Kind of made me sad too, all those grievances not being addressed right. Officer Anatolius paused to look around at other soldiers. You know, we crossbowmen and gunners fight a lot amongst ourselves, right? So I thought we were the unusual soldiers, and we fight even more often than melee guys too. But man, I don't know. He shook his head. Um, shouldn't we talk about this later? I feel like it's becoming time for everyone else to wake up. Pasio said. Yeah, you're right. Officer Anatolia sat up and looked at Officer Kai. Hey Kai. If you want to hear more about this, then meet me here for breakfast. I'll wash myself quickly and wait up here. Yes, of course. Officer Kai and said, and he saw Officer Anatolius walking away. Come on, Apasius, let's go back, Officer Kai said. Alright, so, I'm just going to end it here. Uh, it's basically like a cliffhanger. And there's... There are still a lot more pages to go. This chapter is rather a long one. Alright, so the next video will be about uh, their, their meal time, in which much information is exchanged. So get ready for it. It will be, it'll be wonderful. So thank you for watching and 